this church Come experience Continue the legacy of faith and faithfulness that had been inaugurated by Abraham. And so here is, a, here is Jacob, the grandson of Jacob, uh, the grandson of Abraham, and the son of Isaac. And the Bible lets us know that Jacob, my brothers and sisters, a son of promise, Jacob, who had received the promise, now finds himself in a season where he is being hit relentlessly by a combination of painful punches that hit him and they hurt him. After all, Bible readers know it's in chapter 34 that Jacob has family drama to break out because the book says that his daughter Dinah gets raped when she goes into the land of Shechem and then it's not even done because when Jacob's sons discover that their sister had been raped, they then plot revenge and the book lets us know they set it up where they killed the men of that town where Dinah, their sister, had been raped. And imagine how Jacob must feel. His daughter has been violated and she seemingly, my brothers and sisters, is reduced to having no voice. I park here parenthetically because is that not the plight of those Nigerian women? Almost 300 are missing and yet the media refuses to give them a voice. I'm tripping because this is the same media that still makes as a headline the missing of those on the Malaysian airplane that somehow, some way has vanished into nothing. And of course, some 300 persons are now missing. And yet, my brothers and sisters, you have 300 black African female bodies that do not warrant that kind of media attention. As a matter of fact, it just goes to say that still we live in a day where African black bodies are not valued even when they are violated. And so here in the text, Dinah is not valued. Dinah is violated and the book lets us know her brothers then engage in mass murder. Imagine how Jacob must feel if you a parent you already feel in his pain. His sons are murderers. His daughter has been raped. She's been violated and has no voice. Ain't no drama like family drama because family drama just don't stop. And now the Bible says chapter 35 something happens. Jacob recommits to God and when Jacob recommits to God, God reappears to Jacob and reaffirms the promise. But it's at that moment that the book says that Deborah, who had been the nurse to Jacob's mother, Rebecca, she dies. Evidently the pain, the death is so painful that Jacob has to memorialize her and buries her under a tree and names that oak tree the oak of weeping which speaks of the fact that his heart is broken by the death of the nurse to his beloved mother Rebecca. But I'm not even done. The book lets us know that Jacob moves on from there. God appears to Jacob. I like that. God keeps on appearing and God says, Jacob, I'm going to bless you. You're no longer going to be Jacob, but now you're going to be Israel. Y'all miss your shout right there. God is saying what you have been, you ain't got to be. You see, God is in the progress, in, in the, God is, G G God is in the business of redemptively reinventing us. Isn't it good to know that no matter how disappointed you are in what you have been, what you have been doesn't determine what you can become.
come when you know God for yourself. God's grace is greater than your past. God's mercy is greater than your mess up. As a matter of fact, God can convert your mess up to set the stage for your bless up. And before you know it, you reinvent yourself and you become a, a whole lot more than you were. And people who knew you when can't explain you now, but they don't know that God's grace radically intervened in your life and your, why don't I have some folk getting with this? Because somebody here ought to testify, I'm so glad that who I am ain't what I was and what I am is better than what I was because God is more concerned with where I was. Where's that this church? Come experience.